and welcome to We Talk Fate Show. We are hope fate inspiration cover life. I'm super excited to have you join us today as we will be having an interesting time on the show. Trust me when I say that I have a special guest in the studio. I, I'm very sure you're wondering who this guest is, but you need to take a chill pill. And of course, the topic we are going to be dissecting today is going to intrigue you. So you might as well just want to stick around because we have loads and lots of amazing stuff lined up for you. My name is Comfy. You stick around. We'll be right back. Don't touch the dial. Welcome back at a still week of fate show and of course uh, i'm super bummed today i don't know maybe because of the guests we're having more you know what it is okay my guest is a special one now okay let me take take it slowly let me take it slowly i'm very sure that you guys uh most of you are so conversant with this person if you're in socials you will know that this is someone that has a whole lot to say you know when it comes to the young folks and that's why because this show is centered of course we always talk about god-centered conversation for young people and that's why i feel that this guest is the right one for you we have no other person than the pastor of at logic church mainland pastor clark said good to have you good to have you here too. Oh my god. Pleasure, you know? Yeah, I get it. I get it. That's what I'm saying. I don't know what you get. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to be here. Really, yeah, it's great so. to have you. Here, All right. So. Now let's talk about your outfit. What's the inspiration towards it? No, I just wanted to get something simple and comforting so mm. I can just be, I don't want to be in the, I'm okay. fine like that. It's very good. simple. It makes it very easy for the conversation. Great. It was said. All right. So today we'll be talking on the topic salvation and its misconception. Now I believe that. Mm. Let's be honest here. A whole lot of persons get to have a misconception about salvation. Sometimes I wonder, is this really the right thing or it's not? And sometimes they don't even know people. They don't even have anybody to address the situation. To them, they feel that, okay, this is this is how it's meant to be. This is the yeah. way we understand it to be. But first, before we dissect into the misconception part of it, let's start um, by talking about salvation. What is salvation in Christianity? All right. So um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Salvation is the total idea that God showed up as son mm -hmm. in the flesh to redeem man from the fall that man came into by the fall of man. <laughs> Sounds complicated, right? No. Okay. So let me break it down for you. Right. So man fell, Adam sinned, man fell, and mm. all of human race was born into sin. Mm. And because of that fall, mm. there was a breach in relationship between man and God. Okay. And so man starts now trying to get back to God. He's now making attempts. He's doing many things. He's offering sacrifices. And all of these things mm. do not sum up to that, you know, uh, um, sacrifice that can bring him back into that relationship with God. Mm. And what you find is that every of man's attempt to get back to God is where, what leads to religion. Mm. So every religion of the world is man's attempt to get back to God. Really? Mm -hmm. I'm just hearing that for the first yeah. time. Okay. Every religion of the world was man's attempt or his man's attempt to get back to God. That's how they all broke out. So they are all trying to get back to a supreme deity. But you see, you can't get to God by yourself. It's that God brings you to himself. So man couldn't get back to God because he lacked the ability to. So God came down as flesh and brought man back to himself by himself. And that's the awesomeness of God. So mm. God became flesh. John speaking about this, God became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory, the glories of the Holy because of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's Jesus he was talking about. So Jesus brings salvation to mankind by dying on the cross. And everyone who believes in him now has salvation. Mm. So salvation is faith in the finished work of Jesus. Okay. So you can't have salvation except you have faith in the finished work. So it's very important to work hand in hand. They all work hand in hand. That's why you can't talk about salvation without talking about the gospel. Because the gospel mm -hmm. is what leads you to salvation. You know, some people are... One misconception that I find very, very profound is the fact that some people think that they are saved, but they are not saved. Yeah, that's because true. Because you can be in church and not be in Christ. Uh, oh, no way. Deep. Uh, so deep. You know, I get that, it. That's really, <laughs> you can be in church mm. and not be in Christ. And that's why people are like, ah, I'm going to go to hell from church. Yes, because they are not in Christ. Church is just a gathering. You can be in the circle, you can be in the gathering, but you're not in the presence of Jesus. 
Salvation is what brings you into the presence of Jesus, believing in what he did. Because what he did is for all mankind, but not all mankind has believed in him. And until all men believe in him, they cannot be said to be saved. Mm. So if I don't believe in what he has done, I don't have salvation. So salvation, simply put, is believing in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. All right. Can it be end through good work deeds? Good works can give you salvation, but salvation can produce good works. Mm. And that's the misconception. People think that by behaving right, by being doing good mm. things, I can get saved. You see, there's a man called Cornelius in scriptures. Yeah. Okay. He was doing alms giving and all of those things. And what you don't see is the gospel is not philanthropy. Well, sometimes people say you need to give out to the poor. And when you're doing yeah. that, you Giving get to... to the poor is not salvation. It's not the gospel. But don't you think it's like a pattern? It's like a way. It's taking you close to God. It's not taking you close to God. Oh, okay. That's a misconception. No man comes to the Father except he comes through Jesus. And that's why he said, I am the way. Not giving, not philanthropy. Uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you must come to the Father, you must go through the Son. So if I, I okay. Yeah, so if after going through the sun and I don't get to, you know, do any good deeds, does that really qualify the fact that I'm still safe? You're still safe. So the thing is, is okay. there's salvation, which is a gift, and there's rewards for good deeds. So this reward, does it come from God? Or what? The rewards comes from God. So there's rewards for like, you know, and that, that reward basically is God saying to you, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah, yeah. You see, so when you get back to God, and sometimes the rewards can also be earthly. In other words, what you reap is what you sow. Mm. And put it simply, you don't reap where you sow, you reap what you sow. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you get a <laughs> so, but so some people, you see, that's where okay. people get frustrated. Because many people want to reap where they sow. Mm. So because I did something good for you or to you, I'm expecting that you will do good to me in return. But it's not crime. It's not a crime. There's no deal. crime yeah. there. But you see, that's a setup for heartbreak. Because oh. sometimes the good things that you do wouldn't come from the people that you did good to. They would most times be the one who stab you in the back. But you see, what happens is God has a way of bringing that same good to you from other people, from other places. So the focus is be good, but don't expect good from the people that you do it to. Just be good and know that God will reward you. Good will come back to you, full measures. But we need to accept the fact that it's not easy for you to be good and not accepting something from people, not even getting to see that people get to see that you were doing something for them and only that, having the mindset that God is there. To but that's why it's called human nature. And that's why the Bible says that the heart of man is desperately wicked. And so they say, for no man can search it. Mm. And so God did something good for all mankind, yet nobody has repaid him for it. Ah, sure. Yeah. And so God is the first one receiving the heartbreak, actually. Mm. So we all serve God breakfast. <laughs> When we didn't believe in the gospel. No way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's dive but into But he keeps loving us regardless. Definitely. So you see, God's mm. love is unconditional. Mm. And he keeps waiting for us to turn back and say, okay, fine, I'm going to accept you. Some people have been hearing the gospel for like 20 years and they haven't said yes. Okay. You see what really? I'm saying? And God is still patient. It, it brings me to the picture of the story of Noah and the mm. ark. Noah builds the ark and was asking people to come into the ark for 120 years. Mm. And they didn't come in. And then the storm came and the, wrong, the rain came and they all got drowned in it and yeah. they all died. That was a picture of Jesus in the New Testament. Oh. So Noah is a type and shadow of Christ. And the name of Noah, his name is actually grace or rest. It speaks about Jesus and the rest he will bring to those who believe in him. Mm. <laughs> so mm. the ark is a type of Jesus which we run into and we are saved. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. <laughs> and the righteous mm. runs into and it. And they're saved. And they're saved. Exactly. The same way. So Noah was calling to people the same way God is calling to the world. Now believe in my son and you have salvation. So you can mm. have salvation outside of the gospel. And that misconception is so mm. powerful because I tell you something. People go to church and they tell them about 10 ways to make it in life. And then say, come to an altar call and receive Jesus. And they think they are saved. Yeah, no, that's no, true. No, you're not saved. But well, come on, they free for you. No, they no, you're not you. It's not the prayer that gets you saved. It's the message that gets you saved. Message from where? The message of the gospel. So what is the gospel now? Oh. Okay. <laughs> the gospel now. The gospel is the message of his death, burial, and resurrection. That's mm. where salvation is in. So I can't tell you about 10 steps to make it in life, 10 ways to survive COVID. And then I tell you, come and receive a message, an altar call. It's not the altar call that gets you saved. Because the truth about the matter is, nobody answered an altar call in the scriptures. Read through from Genesis to Revelation. You would never see anybody who was said to say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my life, come into my life. No, 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 no. So, he was believing in the message. 
So when they heard the disciples say it, they believed, mm. and the Holy Ghost came into them and owned them. Hmm. So the message is what brings salvation. If you don't hear the message, if you don't believe the message, you can't be said to be saved. You probably heard some motivational speaking. And motivation doesn't get you saved. It just warms you up. But don't you think it takes time? It doesn't take time. It just takes faith. Hmm. Okay. All right. Let me ask you this question. <laughs> is there a condition for salvation? There's no condition. The only condition is that you just believe. Hmm. And the thing is, people don't think believing is enough. So they want to add something to believe in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hmm. And you must understand salvation is a gift, not a reward. So you don't have to work for it. Hmm. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith. Hmm. Notice, by grace are you saved, not by faith. You're saved by grace. In other words, grace is what he has done. Through faith, through believing in what he has done. Mm. None of yourselves, for it is the gift of God, lest mm. any man should boast. You see? So why is that important? Because God doesn't want you to have something to brag about or pride in when it comes to salvation. He wants it to be his work and his work only. Mm. So if we have something to do to contribute to salvation, we'll go about bragging that we did something about it. That's true. I didn't save myself. He saved me. All I had to do was put faith in what he did. Mm. Did you understand? But it was because you showed uh, you showed effort. You were able to tell him, God, I'm here. It's not Use your me. effort that made him die. It's not your effort that made him come. Oh. He saw, you see, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. You see, while we're yet sinners. Christ died for us. Christ, now, so it wasn't your good behavior that triggered his move. Because the actions of man cannot trigger the move of God. If the actions of man trigger the move of God, it will mean that man, God can be manipulated by man. Hmm. Okay. You see that now? Mm. While we're yet sinners, the message Bible said when we're of no use whatsoever to him. So he didn't die when we had good behavior. If he died then, it would mean that our good behavior made him die. So we would say we are qualified for his death. No. He died when we had nothing to offer him. When we had no value in ourselves. So it was his death that put value on the believer. Mm. Yeah. Because mm. we know the value of a thing by how much was paid for it. Yeah. You see now. Mm. So if I pick up your phone now, which probably may be worth a hundred and fifty thousand, for instance, mm. and I paid a million naira for it, the value goes up. Definitely. So what was paid for me? The blood. Okay, <laughs> we get it. And uh, trust me when I say it's getting hotter in the studio. But you know what? You were one of those stick and chill people. Let's go on this quick break, and while we come back, the show continues. Please stay with me. <laughs> Okay, welcome back from the short break. Of course, this is We Talk Faith. And of course, we still have Pastor Claxon. We have been dishing the word of God as always. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, it's the same. We are in the altar of God. Trust me. And it's great to see that. Everywhere we'll believers get the altar of God. So. <laughs> great. All right. Let's talk about the role salvation plays okay. in an individual. Okay. What are these roles? Right. So um, I wouldn't say it's a role. Mm. I would just say it's a reality. Mm. In other words, the whole essence of salvation is that God makes you become like him. And that's what takes time. Mm. You see, you know, but you see, initially, at the point of salvation, you're a new man. If any mm. man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All like mm. things have passed away and all things have become new. Definitely. Where we have a misconception is people keep looking at their outward man and saying, but I'm not changed. I'm still the black man. I'm still the guy who is struggling. Mm -mm -mm. Salvation did not fix your mindset, it fixed your spirit. Mm. Yeah. Because you see, all things have become new. It says, Behold, all things. Because why did he say behold? Because you might you are saved in your spirit, but you still look dirty on the outside. Sure. So you must look inside of you. So what happened was this as salvation, God changed your OS, but you still had the body of the old phone. Mm. So he moved you from Probably upgrade. <laughs> Let me not say upgrade because salvation is not an upgrade. It's a complete change. So your old man was removed and the new man was implanted. Some people now even think that they have two spirits. They have the Holy Spirit in them and they have the new spirit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What does the Bible teach? He who is joined with the Lord is one spirit, not two spirits. So at salvation, you don't have your spirit. You have his spirit. Inside of you. Inside of you. So when we say the believer is a temple of God, it's because the Holy Ghost has displaced the human spirit. So he's now born again. So born again is that the Holy Ghost now is in the believer. Hmm. That's what born again is. It doesn't mean that you're not doing new new things. You can be doing old things and you're still saved. 
But the mm. point is, is when you realize that this is who you are now and you're training your mind in the word. That's what Paul calls it in, in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. He says, um, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by mm. the renewing of your mind. Yeah. So salvation changes your spirit, renewing of the mind transforms you. Mm. So at this point, can you lose your salvation? You can't lose your salvation. You didn't work for it. It's a gift. So at some point, I can lose it. Never will. Oh, great. I was thinking you could actually lose your salvation. You can lose your salvation. Okay. Great to know. All right. Now, let's come to you. <laughs> but I was talking, speaking about it. It was Jesus who was saying that I give them eternal life and they shall never by any means lose it. Okay. So when is there, it's there. It's there, it's there. Even when I'm doing other things that doesn't please God. So what, what, we, what we now say to that is this. Salvation being eternal. Oh, God, let me say this to you. An eternal father cannot give back to temporal souls. Sure. Sure, okay. So we will always have to define being born again mm. to the same way we are born in natural birth. Can you be unborn again in the natural? Nah. So you can't be unborn again in the spiritual. Ah, okay. And no matter how you stray from your family, you probably travel from here mm -hmm. to Canada. Mm. Distance does not dissolve DNA. Of course, it doesn't. Uh -huh. You've been doing some wrong things as you're growing up as a child. Your, your parents throw you out. They walk you through the path. And sometimes they can abandon you. They abandon you, mm -hmm. but they can't remove the DNA inside of you. Nah, you are still can. their child. So okay. sonship, you see, that's why we call the prodigal son the prodigal son. He's still yeah. son, not the prodigal slave. <laughs> his, sure. his behavior did not change his identity. Mm. He's still a son. So I can't lose salvation. Now, that's not a license for misbehavior. That's bringing you comfort to know, you see, what God is for me always. Mm. Even when I miss it, he's going to be there to guide me back on the right path. Mm. That's why the man who sins does not lose the Holy Ghost. Because if you lose the Holy Ghost, you can't get back on the right path. He's the one who is inside of you to help you get back to God again. Okay. All right. Let's talk about you. Let's salvation. talk about you. <laughs> yes. We know Pastor Claxon. Okay. We know what you do. Okay. We know the kind of things you bring. And we know as young persons that this is someone that we can actually look forward to. Okay. Now, I want to ask you, this, how did you gain your salvation? I gained my salvation the same way we other person should gain salvation, mm. by believing in the gospel, you know. But, but then, I, I didn't have this practical mm. experience that everybody has. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Oh. You know, I just heard the message. I just knew You experienced right. it? You see, the thing is, people are looking for spectacular experiences. Mm. But that's not what brings you salvation. And I should even say that now. It's a misconception. You don't get saved by encounters. You get saved by believing. Yeah. So you see all those Muslims or people who say they saw Jesus in their revelation and all that. That's not salvation. That's a dream. So Jesus will have to now point you to somebody who will preach the gospel to you in the flesh. Because Jesus does not preach. Angels don't preach. So he cannot talk to you. He can't preach the gospel to you. The gospel is committed to men. What of when he tells you a place to read in the scripture? He's pointing you back to salvation. But he's not preaching to you. Oh. So listen to me. Paul is going to Damascus to destroy the place. And guess what? He meets Jesus on his way. Yeah. And he falls down because there was this heavy light on him and all mm. that. There. And then he says, Lord, Lord, blah, blah, blah. And Jesus said to him, go into the city and I will send you a guy called Ananias. Now, Jesus doesn't preach to Saul. He doesn't say, ah, you have to give your life to Christ too. Mm -mm. He said, mm. go into the city. Now, Jesus sends Ananias to Saul to preach the gospel to him. When Cornelius had an angel see him in a dream, Cornelius said, send for Peter. He will bring you the word of life. So angels don't preach. Why is this powerful? Because the bringer of salvation determines the outcome of salvation. Hmm. The bringer of salvation also determines the offspring of salvation. Salvation is a message, or the gospel is a message that produces sons. So servants can communicate the message that brings sons. Hmm. Because if they do, they will give birth to servants and slaves. It have to be sons who will bring about the message of sonship yeah. and tell you that you become a son by hearing the message. Hmm. So it's just believing the same way. You can have a special encounter, but the end point must come to believing. If you had a dream of Jesus and you didn't believe in the gospel, you are not saved. If you saw 20 angels and you didn't believe in the gospel, you're not saved. So I believe the gospel. Hmm. And that's how I got to salvation. All right. So tell me, how has been the journey so far? It's not been easy. <laughs> He's just giving it's not the easy road. Yeah, okay. it's not an easy road. <laughs> Listen, God did not promise us smooth sailing. He promised us safe landing. Oh, okay. 
because my pastor was always saying. That's bad. Okay. Yeah. God did not promise us smooth sailing. He promised us safe landing. In other words, the see, the presence of the storm is not the absence of Jesus, hmm. but the presence of Jesus. Hmm. Peace in the storm is that Jesus is there. It's not like there's nothing happening. Yeah, sure. You understand what I'm trying to see? And that's also a misconception. Because some people think that the moment you get saved, your account balance will change. Mm -mm. Sure. You can have Jesus and go through a hard time. But guess what he says? He says, in this world, you'll have many troubles. But cheer up, I have overcome the world. So when I see tribulations, I'm shouting, I've overcome. I'm speaking from victory, not to victory. You're responsible for everything that you I don't. Through. I don't see the circumstances. Okay. I see the victory on the cross. Mm -hmm. So my eyes are always on the cross. What did we tell them in the wilderness? He says, if anyone is beaten by a serpent, look at the brazen serpent there, and he'll be healed. He didn't say tight. Mm. Most people are trying to tie their problems. They're trying to fix it. No, no, no. The call is not to fix the problem. The call is to keep your eyes on Jesus. So I'm not looking at the situation, because when you look at the situation, you lose the focus. Mm. You lose sight of the provision for healing, the provision for breakthrough, the provision for... Because God always makes provision come before the problems. Mm. But we don't see it because we're focused on the issues. And some of us are even focused on counting other people's blessings that we don't see ours. Hmm. Really amazing to know. Now, uh, there's something I want to ask you because yeah. I believe that this is a show for young persons and okay. most of them, maybe at some points they feel that I don't really have anyone to take me through the path of knowing what salvation is all about. Okay. So to that young person out there that is trying and struggling to do something for themselves, what do you have to say regarding the salvation thing? First thing you want to know is that your efforts can get you saved. Hmm. Struggling and trying hard, it won't get you saved, it won't do the job. All you need to do is rest. Well, you know, sometimes when you look around, this is the 21st century, we get to see the trends. Okay. If you look at things that are happening, if you're not careful, you're going to fall. And these are the things that we need to understand that as a young person, stating our ground, knowing what to do. So in respect of everything that surrounds us, how do we still remain in that particular place? The two things you're going off about here. Salvation is one time. Salvation is not a process. So if you're speaking about young people who are having to struggle in the faith, mm. that's not salvation. You only get saved once, and then you can grow in the faith. Mm. So what we're talking about now will be spiritual growth, not salvation. Mm. You see what I'm mm. saying now? So if you're talking about young people who are having to deal with struggles, challenges, yeah. addictions, and all of that, even though they are saved, what they have to do is now be in the right circle of people who can influence them. Because you see, maturity sometimes is contagious. Yeah. If you're in the wrong circle, you pick up the wrong things. If you're in the right circle, you pick up the right things. Mm -hmm. So I may not exactly give you so much right here that I can just make it happen spontaneously. Yeah. But you have to be in that circle where you're taught, you're trained, and you must be willing to take instructions. If we have a generation of people who are so stubborn, Gen Z's. <laughs> you see, all these, you are woke, do you. Mm -hmm. Do the word. Mm -hmm. Don't do you. It's nothing like that in scriptures. Don't do you do the word because sometimes you are wrong yourself. You are off course yourself. So if you are doing you, you are doing rubbish. Just do what the word says. You see, I, I can give you. Yeah, growth is not growth is not spontaneous. It's a process. The only thing that grows fast is cancer. Okay. It takes time to grow people. It takes time to culture people. You're a very reasonable young lady. You didn't come here this place by chance. Yeah. It took you years of building yourself, sure. investing in yourself, making some mistakes and learning. Mm. So I'm not going to tell you 10 steps right here on camera that will just change your life automatically. No, 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 no. <laughs> Find a good church somewhere where you are training people and they have sex there. Sit down there. Don't be going up and down. Find a good church. Nobody always shout, Amen, Amen, Amen. Amen doesn't grow you. The word grows you. <laughs> <laughs> the most important thing is being in the right circle. Be in the right place. Okay. Because we have these people who just feel like your relationship with God ends with one early money prayer. So I'm sorry, yeah. but that's the truth. Yeah, that's true. And that's what you have as well, have a work with God. That can grow you. <laughs> You're always shouting, hey, Amen. Hey, no, that's okay. I can, I can help you. <laughs> okay, now there's something yeah. there's this misconception I heard somewhere. Yeah. That if you do not tell people about Jesus, it means you're not a Christian. No, no. So it means you're a Christian who is not a responsible Christian. How? How am I not responsible? Because you see, what the faith does for you, it makes you responsible for others. 
You got saved because someone told you. Okay. The way to become a responsible Christian is by telling others about your faith. You don't keep the faith to yourself. If I give you, listen to me, if you want a million dollar contract, will you talk mm. about it? Will you loud it? Will you shout about it? <laughs> so do okay. you think having Jesus is bigger than the contract or not? Uh, Why not shout about Jesus? Jesus is what shouted about. <laughs> Tell your friends about Jesus. Tell your neighbors about Jesus. Don't keep him to yourself. You can have eternal life and keep it. That's selfishness. But you know, some people, some persons, when it comes to evangelism, it's not their thing. They get to evangelize. Go into the world. And preach, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so it's everybody's thing who is saved. Okay. Not for pastors, not for, not for evangelists. Not, mm -mm. Everyone, see, he says, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world back unto himself, and mm. now has given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. So mm. every believer has a ministry. Every believer is a minister. What's the ministry? Go into the world, mm. reconcile men. He says, not counting their sins, not condemning them, but telling them Jesus loved them and has died for them, has offered them forgiveness. Mm. Just say yes to Jesus and your life changes. It's simple like that. Okay. All right, moving Every on. believer should preach the gospel. All right. Every yeah. believer should preach the gospel. Yeah. That's the story. Okay. Now, I want to ask you this. When it comes to baptism, yeah. I've seen lots of people that say, is there any need for me to go for it? I've accepted Jesus. There is no need. I don't think it can actually guarantee my salvation. So I'm here to ask you, do baptism guarantee one salvation? Gar but baptism doesn't guarantee salvation. It's very straightforward like that. So doesn't it? You don't need to get baptized to get saved. Salvation in the New Testament is the baptism of the New Testament. So what happens? What the people that do this? So it, I mean, if you want to baptize, it's mm. fine. So you have, I, I'll tell you what happened. Okay. Baptism existed before Jesus came on board. Jesus is not the originator of baptism. The Jews were baptizing people as a way of initiating them into a certain leadership or followership system. Mm. So John was baptizing. His purpose was to reveal the Christ. Mm. So when he came, the scripture says that I did not know him who was to come, but he who sent me said, upon him who you will see the, the spirit descend on like a dove, he will be the one. So his baptism was essentially to mm. reveal Jesus. Mm. So when he saw Jesus, the spirit came upon him like a dove. That was when he should have ended baptism. Oh. But he went on baptizing. Notice what he said. He said, I must decrease that you might increase. Decrease, yes. You see now, he also said, God help me. <laughs> I baptize you with water, but there's one coming who is mightier than I, whose shoes I cannot untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So in real picture, the baptism of the spirit was meant to replace the baptism of water. Oh. It's clear in scriptures, but we don't see it. We like things we can add to salvation. Okay. Salvation is complete without addition. Stop adding things to it. Isn't it so powerful that the thief on the cross was not baptized? Mm, that's true. No, no, Jesus didn't say you have to come down yeah, now, go we'll yeah. get some water on your head, and then come back on the cross and let's go together to paradise. He said, today you're going with me to paradise. Straightforward. Straight from mm -hmm. there. So if the thief on the cross made it to heaven without penance, without confession every Friday, without um, baptism, mm. you don't need those things for salvation. All you need to do is believe, just like he believed. He says, remember me in your kingdom. That's all he did. That guy didn't go back to restitute. All yeah, the people he raised, all true. the people he killed, he didn't go back to say, I'm sorry. Because, you see, forgiveness of sins is not, I'm sorry. So are you saying we cannot do restitution? <laughs> it's not a biblical thing. Oh, really? Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're not called to restitute, we're called to believe. Oh, I never knew that. We're not called to restitute. Wow. Do you remember that on the day when Jesus was going to be killed, two things happened. Yeah. He was exchanged for another guy called Barabbas. Sure. Barabbas was a deadly guy, criminal, mm. bad guy. And they said, give us Barabbas, kill Jesus. Barabbas had more than people, kill people, but they could see him walking on their streets freely and nobody could touch him. Why? Jesus took his place. Mm. He didn't go to apologize to anybody. The moment someone takes your place and sacrifice, you are free to go. No restitution, no apologies, just keep going. Okay. I'm walking free in the freedom that Christ has brought me into. Oh my, this is the energy I need right now. Trust me. So, so, so if, you, like, if you want to go and apologize to someone for doing wrong to them, that's a different ballgame. I can say, oh, I hurt you, I'm sorry, and all of that. But that's not where my salvation is hinging on. But you don't think he can actually block the blessings of God from coming into No, 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 no. The blessing of God is in the spirit, not in the physical. Stop you can't block it. <laughs> you can't block the blessings of God. Right. Okay. It's in the spirit now. Okay. 
what you can block is the flow of the blessing through people to you. Because when mm. God wants to bless you, he blesses you through human okay. beings. Right. So that's why you must service relationships. Don't just treat people badly because you're a Christian and mm. think you can go scot free with that. No, if you don't service the relationships in your life, you're going to have a hard time on earth. God can still keep loving you, but people are going to deal with you. Why? Mm. Because God looks in the heart, man looks at the outward. Mm. People think, ah, I have favor with God. You, you have favor with God, but you must have favor with men. Sure. And favor with men sometimes is a function of conduct and behavior. Hmm. So God has given you favor, but when you have to, you can't be like in an office setting and then you are always insulting people, talking down on people, you're not effective in your job, hmm. you show up late and you expect promotion. <laughs> Pray from now till next week. Except you're using jazz. <laughs> All right, finally, before we wrap up the show, oh, trust me, that's actually been an amazing event. I want to ask you this question. How do we clear this misconception finally? I know there are, and most people believe and accept these things. But yeah. of course, maybe they don't know about it. True. So now, how do we clear these misconceptions? You see, misconceptions thrive where ignorance rules. Hmm. So the way to clear it is get your head seated somewhere where they teach the right doctrine and be open-minded, be teachable. Mm. That's the only thing. You don't cast out ignorance, you teach out ignorance. You don't lay hands and ignorance will disappear. Mm -mm. You sit down and you're taught. So people don't want to be taught. And some people enjoy the bliss of ignorance because for some reasons they are benefiting from it somehow or it makes yeah. them feel good. Mm. Mm -mm. You're not called to feel good, you're called to do Christ. So let's not enjoy rubbish and then just suffer for nothing. Mm -hmm. When I was teaching this, and I was telling some the Bible says that he was wounded for our transgression. Yeah. He was beaten for our peace. Now, why would they beat him for your peace? And then you now take yourself to somewhere. They will now beat you for deliverance. Is that no madness in the name of Jesus? No. Mm -hmm. If they beat him, why are they beating you? He was beaten for my sake so that they wouldn't have to beat me. Mm -hmm. So in the gospel, in salvation, deliverance was conducted. So why am I going for deliverance? Hmm. He has called us out of darkness. He has delivered us. You see, the tenses are very important. When you're studying scriptures, you need brighter grammar for it. If you didn't do Ugo see you go or Queen Premier or Mastering English, try and get some. He had delivered us, not will deliver, hmm. out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of light. So if he has delivered you and that thing means anything to you, why are you looking for deliverance? Why are you going after things that don't matter? Stick with the simplicity of the gospel. This generation like deep things. Mm -mm. The simplicity of the gospel is the depth of the gospel. It's because the word is evolving now. And it's does, like... listen, the gospel does not evolve. The gospel is constant. Yeah, no. God doesn't move on trends. He moves in the spirit. Mm. I think I've preached. <laughs> God doesn't move on trends. Mm. He moves with the spirit. Are you sure you what I'm saying? Yeah, God doesn't okay. move on trends. We're not flowing with the trend. We're flowing with the spirit. We stick with the word. The simplicity of the gospel is the depth of the gospel. All these portals, realms, dimensions, open it here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Jesus is already revealed. He's here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where we need to end of the show. Trust me. It has really been an amazing time. Thank so you so for gracing. Oh, but okay. I don't know what to say more. I'm very sure you've learned enough. All right. And um, trust me, Pastor Claxton is someone that when you want to hear things, go to his <laughs> socials. Like, just go there. You will hear him speak bars. Like, things that are good, just going to edify your heart. It. That's the thing. I'm no, really no, I get it. <laughs> Okay, it's about that time that we get to draw the curtain right here on We Talk Faith Show. And I want to say thank you so much for watching. Remember that you can be part of a conversation by letting us know down there on the comment section. Do let us know what are the conceptions that you've heard about salvation. And let's just, uh, you know, talk about it right there in the comment section. We are on all social media platforms, reaching out on your screen. Subscribe to our YouTube channels. And of course, uh, click on the notification bell so that when we your content, you can actually get to see it. My name is Kavi. Till I meet you next time. Stay blessed. Thank you.